Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Thursday, May 31st, 10.32 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at a home that collapsed in Boone, North Carolina, after Tropical Storm Alberto made its way all the way up there, causing landslides, killing two. Here we have a firefighter for scale. This house apparently might have blown up because of the landslide. Two killed after home collapses in Boone due to landslide. Here is the video. And you can see the, the wrath of Mother Nature. Solar array crushed, lives lost. This is just the beginning. Protect yourself now. If you're in areas where this type of activity may happen, landslides, earthquakes, volcanoes, get out. We cannot implore you enough. Alberto's wrath has killed four. Closed highways in North Carolina due to floods, malls, mudslides, and fallen trees. Four North Carolina deaths are now being attributed to subtropical storm Alberto with more than 50 roads in western North Carolina counties closed Thursday because of flooding, mudslides, and fallen trees. The deaths include two people who died Wednesday when mudslides and a suspected gas explosion combined to cause a home to collapse near Boone. And a TV anchorman and photojournalist we covered yesterday were killed when a vehicle was struck by a tree near Tyrone. Tyrone, you do the phonetics. The grand solar minimum includes top seasonal snowfalls of 60 feet at Mount Baker. Al Gore, I hope you're watching our program. Because 60 feet certainly is a lot more than no snow. 40 feet at Lookout Pass, 35 feet at Silver Mountain, 35 feet at Timber Lodge, Grouse Mountain had 30 feet, Crystal Mountain over 30 feet, Jackson Hole had over 30 feet. Snowbird over 30 feet, Schweitzer over 30 feet, and Grand Tarhee over 30 feet of snow. That's not inches because we just talked about 60 feet of snow, more than 60 feet falling this winter at Mount Baker. <laughs> that is a lot of snow. 60 feet? That's 10 times taller than the average human. We're number one in snow. Meteorologist explains why. Kawinal, Kibinal, get so much snow. They got over 300 inches, 25 plus feet of snow. <laughs> and it's no surprise. It was five feet over the average, but the snow is increasing in the Northern Hemisphere as well as the Southern Hemisphere. Tennis ball size hail reported after severe thunder thunderstorms rocks the roundup. This is huge hail. Parts of eastern Montana saw hail Thursday evening the size of tennis balls in Roundup. A severe thunderstorm that pummeled Roundup after no other parts of Muscleshell County Thursday brought with it tennis ball sized hail that shattered windows. Can you imagine and damaged property, according to the National Weather Service? Thanks. We had no idea four inch balls of hail would break windows. Severe storm produces large hail in the Ozarks. I don't ever remember hail like this ever in my 46 years of existence. But it's happening every day in multiple states in 2018, folks. Grand solar minimum much. The National Weather Service says around a round of scattered showers and thunderstorms brought large hail and strong wind gusts. Taney County Emergency Management reported golf size hail, while there was also some baseball size hail spotted near Forsyth. Meteorologists got reports of half dollar size hail on Highway F and 65. And we'll continue to Compare hail to other objects until they reach watermelons. UK weather latest forecasters warn of floods and potential risk of life as thunderstorms and hail are predicted. Whew. Who would have thought of that? Man, that's really rare. I haven't heard of hail recently. Parts of the UK have been warned to expect a month of rain and potential floods which could ruin homes and businesses. Sounds like they're fluxed. The Met Office has issued an amber rain warning for London and southeast and southwest Wales and the Mist West Midlands. That sounds like the whole place. Residents have been told to expect a mix of thunderstorms, torrential rain, lightning, large hail, and loss of life, posing a risk 
<laughs> you think? We've got a few warnings issued for thunderstorms and very heavy rain for mainly the southern parts of the UK, Bonnie Diamond. Hey, a spokesperson for the Met office told the Independent. We have an amber warning. And in the heaviest downpours, we could see upwards of 60 millimeters falling within two to three hours. She said we're totally fluxed. And other areas could see torrential rain totally fluxing them. If we do see these heavy downpours, there's the potential we could see figures reaching upwards of 60 millimeters. That would suggest some places may see their monthly total rain being met within a day. This guy is totally pissed and concerned, and we're going to blow him up. There he is. Look at him. Look how unkempt he is. That must be a British thing. Yeah, unbutton your collar, leave your stuff all unironed, make it wrinkly, but look concerned and point a lot. This doesn't look cold at all, but this exclamation point drives down the fear that is needed because hail may be falling. And that's probably what he's saying. We'll never know. We don't have time. Look at all these links. Snow avalanche kills five at Babusar Top. This is in Pakistan. Five people were buried alive when the snow avalanche hit a jeep. Al, are you listening? A snow avalanche hit a jeep, and it's almost summer in Pakistan. That was Wednesday evening. One person was rescued. The rest suffocated. Where are the icebergs? Tour operators say iceberg sightings are down so far this year. Down this year so far. I wonder why that could be. Huh. Why, do, why aren't the icebergs moving south? Oh, there's over five meters of ice up in the Arctic Circle. Maybe the ice is all locked up in the Arctic Circle, reaching multi-decadal highs, surpassing 2014 year levels here. Yeah, it's past 2014. It's touching the multi-decadal average right now. In fact, Arctic ice... Is as thick as it's been in the, since the 1970s. These icebergs are not going to break off until late summer. Expect to see icebergs in August moving south down the east coast of the U.S. And it's definitely going to spawn global warming alarmists to say that the Arctic is, is melting away. It's all gone. The Northern Passage is never opening. There's still 20 feet of ice here. There's, look at this. There's over 30 feet of ice. This is over five meters in this pink zone. Clearly we can see Hudson Bay, still thick ice, only thinning up here on the Eastern shore. Over five meters of ice are deposited in this region. This is unprecedented. They have no idea what's going on up in Baffin. I'll tell you what they do know up in Baffin. When the glaciation begins, it starts in Baffin Island. In this thick, five meter thick red zone and pink zone, this is where the glaciers begin building. There will be an ice cap here in just a few years, and it's going to extend out into Hudson Bay and move down into the Northeast. That's the way it has happened every single time. We're going to be getting to the science in a moment, because we have a lot of nonsense to talk about. Specifically, they're going to be global warming alarmists are going to claim that the Inuit people are melting out of their degrees centigrade warmer up in Alaska. We're going to get to this article and we're going to expose the truth. And it is embarrassing. It's so embarrassing that in May of 2015, updated NASA data showed that global warming is not causing any polar ice retreat. They knew this at the peak of global warming, and it got buried. Try to find this article on Forbes, and I guarantee you it's going to be a very difficult day for you. This came out in May 19, 2015. NASA satellite instruments reveal the Earth's polar ice caps have not receded at all since the satellite instruments began measuring the ice caps in 1979. Are you picking up what we're putting down? This is from the mainstream two years ago. Since the end of 2012, polar ice caps have not receded at all since the satellite instruments began measuring the ice caps in 1979. 
Moreover, total polar ice extent has largely remained above the post-1979 average, which means that NASA and NOAA is lying to you and has been for decades. The updated data contradicts one of the most frequently asserted global warming claims that global warming is causing the polar ice caps to recede. Now, this data in 2015 proves that the Earth's polar ice caps have not receded at all since the satellite instruments began measuring ice caps in 1979. Total polar ice extent has remained above the post-1979 average. The timing of the 1979 NASA satellite instrument launch could not have been better for global warming alarmists. The late 1970s marked the end of a 30-year cooling trend, and as a result, the polar ice caps were quite likely more extensive than they had been since the 1920s. You're going to receive the truth in this article. I would love you all to read it. And you can bone up on the nonsense that's been happening in the last three years. Complete fabrication of the truth and lies. Let's talk about some of the scientific facts. 10 kilometer long earth crack opens in El Gale Escarpment in Kenya. This is in the Rift Valley and this is to be expected as the earth is expanding and the rifting will continue. We've been reporting on mid-ocean ridge activity for months. Seismic update, no quakes of note. I wanted to uh, bring note to Mayotte again. This has been ongoing for weeks now, and we could expect an eruption happening here any time in the future, as well as a VEI-6 going off anywhere in the Indonesia region. And here we have a 5.1 at a great depth, could be signaling a precursor to a larger quake. Here we have another deep 5.3. So we want to be on the lookout for a shallow large quake coming in the next 24 hours. <clears throat> Worldwide volcano news update. We have Sakota Jima. We know that is erupting, of course, today. Marapi. And there's no information. We have an eruption reported. Just moments ago on the 1st of June. So we're going to be waiting for updates on that. This is brand new information. We also have Dukono, Reventador, Kilauea. Sabankaya erupting as well. Now, this is very interesting that Merapi is coming back awake because we're waiting for a large VEI 4 to 6 to happen in any day. Especially, it, it definitely happening in the next two years. So we're just waiting on it. We're going to be giving you some more historical information. Now, if you come back here, and I'm going to show you the direct comparison of the past four interglacial periods. You can see that the most recent one, the maroon one that we're in, is anomalous. It has this younger Dryas event where the Earth rapidly cooled 20 degrees C and then warmed up 26 degrees C in 2,000 years. Yes. Mainstream science isn't telling you that. They're telling you that if the Earth warms a half a degree C, we're all going to burn up. But just 10,000 years ago, the Earth warmed 26 degrees centigrade in 2,000 years. And it didn't affect the natives. They all survived or we would have Minoan warm was up to seven degrees centigrade warmer than it is today. And yet the mainstream tells you that this is the warmest it's ever been. They're talking about this little spike in maroon here. This is all global warming is. And it happened here during the medieval warm. In fact, it was a little more drastic. It happened here during the Roman warm. And the Minoan warming was even more drastic. Seven degrees C rise in temperature to the peak empire, and then it fell off with just a four degree reset. The Roman empire died off with just a three degree drop. The medieval warm, the Vikings were crushed by a five degree drop into the mini ice age. And we've recovered into the modern empire. and We're about to drop off seven degrees C. Based on historical information. Now you wonder why this blue line is so cold. Well, 234,000 years ago, we had huge VEI-6 eruptions globally, dozens of them, and it caused the planet to cool for tens of thousands of years. This is an interglacial that got really cold because of volcanoes exploding. The other interglacials 
gradually cooled 10 degrees C, which is where we're headed based on the average, because volcanoes continue to erupt each solar minimum as we descended into the next glacial period. We are, we're at the drop off of a grand solar minimum that will destroy the empire like it has every other time, and you're living it. Now, Pavlov will go off soon. We have some other volcanic tidbits to share with you. Here we have Emmons Lake Volcanic Explosion VEI-6 happening 234,000 years ago. Resulting in the rapid cooling of the planet. And this blue line, here's 234,000 years ago right here. And then look what happens to the temperature on Earth. It drops off for the next 5,000 years because it's dark out <laughs> and there were dragons flying around. A volcano in the last little ice age coming from Armstrong Economics in the upland region of the southern Peru, there's a volcano named Huayna Putina, which to this remains one of the largest ever to erupt in South America. Yes, it erupted during the mini ice age and it will erupt again. If this is not the volcano that causes the planet to cool, others will. And this is an interesting case study in coinage where they show you that gold coins were used up into 1609 until this volcano erupted. Shortly after that, the economies of the world collapsed. Global unrest and famine ensued. And we were stuck down here in the Little Ice Age. Yes. It remained cold for hundreds of years, and they started making coins out of copper and brass because world economies collapsed, just like they're going to in the next few years. Take your head out of your arse. Sea ice, snow, it's all changing. The Inuit culture struggles with the warming world. Come read this nonsense article. <laughs> it's such a crock. It goes on to say that the natives here have been around for 8,000 years and they have never had to experience with a half a degree C warming. Yes, that's what it says. It says the Inuit people 8,000 years ago didn't have to deal with this. Now here's 8,000 years ago, which is five degrees C warmer than today. So the Inuit people were living in an ice-free Alaska. They were living in an ice-free Alaska 8,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, maybe 2,000 years ago. These are the solar maximums that happen every 1,000 years as well. And the grand solar minimums happen every 1,000 years as well. So after every solar max here, 2,000 years ago, the Roman warm, Solar max here, 1,000 years ago, the medieval warm. Modern empire max, 2012, global warming. After that, the empires collapse within a decade. <laughs> We're five years into the collapse. So how many years do you think we have left until we collapse? Yes, you're correct. That's less than five years. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And these lies are becoming amazing. The Inuit people lived on the earth for the last 8,000 years and it has been warmer than today. The last 8,000 years have been up to 5 degrees C warmer globally. At some point, the lying will stop and this information will pass hands and we will all know the truth. Here's the truth. 2,000 years ago, at the end of the solar max, the Roman warm, the shit hit the fan. And this guy got hit in the head with a block. He was probably looking at his smartphone and texting someone. They can't find his head because this pillar cut it off and it's missing. Thanks, Pompeii. Grand solar minimum much? Cosmic hazards coming out of the mainstream. They're warning about cosmic rays increasing. They're picking up what we're putting down. This was on NPR. Can you believe it? I can't. 
According to the bomb, snow fields are a generation away from climate meltdown. There's going to be no more snow in Australia and no more skiing, according to this article. Australia is, the snow is <coughs> going to be non-existent in just 30 years. Unfortunately, they didn't check the data and they're full of shite. The Southern Hemisphere sea ice extent has been increasing and it is all-time record highs in recorded history. Antarctica is going nowhere. It is building ice. There is melting from the underneath the undersea volcanoes erupting, up to 1,100 of them erupting underneath the ice in Antarctica now. But the cooling is so rapid on our planet that the ice building on the surface is superseding the melting. And you can see the trend since 1980. Southern Hemisphere ice has been increasing. It's very clear. I did a quick search of a ski resort in Australia, Spencer's Creek, snow season start. What you're looking at is all the recorded history of snow in Australia. There's very limited data in the Southern Hemisphere, but I found you some. Spencer's Creek, snow season start. This is the data from 1954 to today, well, last year. And you can clearly see that the 2017 snow year exceeded the 1957 levels. It exceeded the 1967 levels. It exceeded the 1959 levels. And that decades ago, snow was at an all-time low. And that snow is a cycle in the Southern Hemisphere, and it is not decreasing in any way. The 2017 season is above 1967, 1959, and 1957. So there is, the snow is not going away. They're lying to you. And these are the facts. Here is the manipulation happening live. This is the Antarctic sea ice thickness, which we showed you the tracker back in April, was at record highs. And then sometime on the 4th of May, they recalibrated the data and put it right back on the multi-decadal average and started it again. This is fraud. This is not science. There is nothing scientific about this data. Everything about the graph you're looking at, which is coming out of the global cryosphere watch, is fraud. No one can even do a scientific assessment of this data because it doesn't mean anything. You cannot manipulate 1.7 meters of ice thickness by over 100% and then continue the trend. This is a lie. The jig is up. The data is useless. These eyes realize, realize. Why it's time to study how rocket emissions change the atmosphere? Because you've been lying to the public and it's rapidly cooling. So you need a way out. Get the data now before the problem gets worse. They're claiming that rocket launches could accidentally cause the planet to cool. <laughs> this is coming out today. I'll leave you links to the study for the Center for Space Policy and Strategy from the Globalists, April 2018, the policy and science of rocket emissions and how it's going to cool the Earth. <laughs> Whew, man. George Orwell was right. Thank God for Boomtown. It's boom time, kids. Did you take your medicine? Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in this disinformation age. Almost nothing you read can you believe unless you spend hours researching the facts. The time is now to start relying on yourself for the future. Self-sufficiency is the key to survive and thrive. Moving away from population centers and getting out of the control of the globalists. They do not want you to know what's happening. The quickening is what's happening. Google it. Native Americans worldwide, Native cultures in the Northern and Southern Hemisphere talk about this time. <clears throat> We're not soothsayers. We're scientists. We're using facts to warn you of the inevitable future.
one that we have clear data on. There is no anthropogenic anything except stupidity. You are here. You need to be ready by here. And that's soon. Be safe, everyone.